As you can see, we have a large number of school administrators, teachers, and students. Students that were here in Oklahoma City came out to be here. We could have filled this Capitol building up. We just simply elected not to. There were superintendents that called and said, hey, do I need to be there? Hey, you know, we're doing what we're doing. But if you want to fill it up, if that's what it takes to impress the politicians here, we'll fill it up for you. We can do that. This deals in dire straits. These Oklahomans are gravely concerned about the funding for children's education being put on the back burner. And we have scores of others who volunteered to be here. Our question is, are you going to believe the figures the public has been given? I hope you're here today to get the truth. Today we will give you facts and figures, the truth about how severely underfunded education is in Oklahoma, how next year with the numbers of Republican leadership is feeding the public, the funding shortage for your children will be even more severe. The people doing the budget need a large dose of truth serum or reality. When I first started running for office a year and a half ago for House District 88, I believed that the number one issue in my district was going to be jobs in the economy. But two weeks into my campaign, I realized that the number one issue in my district, and frankly, I believe the number one issue in this state, is education. And that's, there's a very good reason for that. We are 48th in the nation, year in and year out, in how we educate our children, 48th. And even though we have that abysmal standard, that low, low standard, we are spending time at the Capitol right now debating issues which are not important to the majority of Oklahomans. Now, we have a law in Oklahoma that was passed nine years ago, and it says that we, as legislators, are to fund education first. By April 1st of every year, legally, the people of this Capitol are supposed to have the budget done and education is supposed to be funded. But for nine years, including this year, we didn't do our job. We didn't get education funded in time. In fact, not only did we not abide by the law, there was a bill passed in committee to repeal that requirement, to repeal fund education first. Now, that type of attitude, those types of actions are unacceptable as long as we remain 48. So we're going to hear a lot of debate, we're going to hear a lot of discussion about reducing the personal income tax. And the irony of that is that the reduction and the loss that we'll see from a 0.25% in 2015 and the loss and the reduction that we'll see from a 0.15 reduction in 2016 is going to equate to a loss in this state of $237 million. Now that's money that we need to be putting into education. We're being told that by reducing the personal income tax, we're going to pull jobs into the state. It's going to stimulate the economy. But we see report after report and survey after survey that tells us that that's not what business is interested in. When business in Oklahoma is thinking about expanding, when businesses are thinking about coming into Oklahoma, they're not asking, what's your personal income tax rate? They're not asking, when was the last time you revised your income tax code? They are asking questions like, can I get an educated and skilled workforce? They're asking questions like, what kind of schools are my employees going to be placing their children into? That's what's important. Education drives the economy. Education is going to bring jobs into this state and ultimately what we do to help or not help education is going to define who we are as a state. In uh, the part of the state that I represent and the part of the state that I was raised in, rural Oklahoma, it is so important that we sustain education. Public education is a quality of life issue. It's a, it's a jobs, it's an economy issue. It's an issue that uh, does not deserve to be kicked under the bus like it has. What I would like to talk to, about today is the, is, is the budget from 2009 to 2013. You know, uh, uh, we, uh, we, we saw public education funded in 2009 and, and, and at a level that public education since then has dropped 
a, 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 in dollar for dollar, if you look at 2009 to 2013 dollars, ha has dropped a quarter of a billion dollars. The economy has, has, has recovered. The, uh, uh, the, the budget has recovered, but not the public education budget. If you look at the increased students that, that the public education in Oklahoma is, is, is educating, you're looking at a drop of a third of a billion dollars. If you look at 2009 and take the consumer price index to today, 2013 dollars, the amount, the, the value that's being put into public education in Oklahoma has dropped nearly a half a billion dollars. $425 million that should be in public education that's not there because it's treated as a stepchild. It's important. You know, we, we, we come here and we want quality. We want to do what's right for the people of Oklahoma. We want to do what's right for rural Oklahoma. We want to do what's right for urban Oklahoma. And the common thread all across is education. And education is something that is being neglected by this legislature. It's being neglected by this governor. And it, it, it's something that we can no longer afford to neglect. You know, our, our uh, uh, employment in the state of Oklahoma is among the, unemployment is among the lowest in the nation. You know, we're doing some things right. We're educating so well on the dollar that we have, but there are so, there, there's so much more that we can do uh, you know, I, I, we commend public education every day, but I will tell you this, that, that the last time I saw, we still count votes at the ballot box, and those people that want to systematically destroy and disassemble public education in Oklahoma are outnumbered. And, and if our electorate will be motivated, we can turn this around, and we can fund public education. Our priorities just have to be straight. Uh, we, we've got, uh, there, there are ways to do that. We've got to mobilize the electorate. And, uh, and, and when we do that, that's when public education and the funding will be fair, it will be equitable, and uh, you know, we won't be talking about uh, 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 ways to, uh, to get around to spend less money on, uh, on children. Children in Oklahoma, you know, some of these legislators I see, they're, they're not bad people. They're not bad people. But the people that are telling them how to vote are telling them wrong. They're telling them wrong, and the people that want to disassemble public education, those are the individuals that we need to stand up to, and we need to say, it's time for us to take, uh, take, take back the reins and to treat our children with the dignity and give them the opportunities that they deserve. Today I'm here to challenge the 54th legislature to put aside party politics and do what's right for the citizens and children of Oklahoma, specifically where education is concerned. It's been said that legislative sessions are all about the money. Well, let's talk about the money and the state of education in Oklahoma. Over the last five years, Oklahoma has made some of the deepest cuts to funding local schools of any state in the nation. Only three states have cut common education more than Oklahoma. Total appropriations since 2009 are down $198 million with over 31,000 new students. The funding cuts have serious consequences for educational quality and economic growth. $117 million is needed for level funding in FY 2014. The numbers we're hearing is maybe 40 to 50 million new dollars for the state uh, funding formula, formula. That is woefully underfunded. Governor Fallon's political platform revolves around growing business in Oklahoma. To do this, she has pressed for capital improvement legislation that would improve inter infrastructure like roads and bridges. Our children are our road to the future and the prosperity in Oklahoma. She has championed what she considers to be business-friendly policy. She's also pressing Republican support to support her plan to cut the state personal income tax without a plan to keep it revenue neutral, which means more cuts to common education and the dollars available for our students. 
She says that it's time that Oklahomans keep more of their hard-earned money in their own pockets. Good soundbite. But my question for her is, when is she going to champion investment in human capital in Oklahoma? Our children, our teachers, our vital state services, such as the Department of Corrections, state health and human services, which are woefully underfunded. We simply cannot continue to support legislation and legislators who are unresponsive to the needs of the people who put them into office. Parents and citizens have made it clear that the vast majority of, of them, when, when informed on the issue, are not in favor of this cut in the personal income tax. We have to recover from the cuts that have already been made to education and the other core services in Oklahoma before we give big business another break. We've given them enough of a break. We have to invest in our human capital. So I implore you, do the right thing, legislature, and adequately fund education and other state agencies, even if it means going against the political flow. It's a turning point for Oklahoma today. This legislature, if we do not invest in our human capital and in our core state services without making another huge cut to education and other vital services, we do a big disservice to our future and our prosperity in Oklahoma. When we speak of public school education and the funding of it, oftentimes it is on those large numbers. We're talking in millions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars or, or half a billion dollars. And what I want to do is I want to bring it down to a single district level, what it, how it actually affects a rural district in Oklahoma. I'm the superintendent of Warner Public Schools, and in the four short years since 2009, we have been cut in local, intermediate, and state uh, funding by $1.5 million. That is over 20% of my annual budget. That is also seven and a half teachers each year that could have been employed in our district. We have gone backwards. Uh, I was sitting in the classrooms during the 10-17 uh, debate and the passage of that law. And what, we, as we became underfunded, it was, it was given us the opportunity, the, the opportunity was given to us to cut out some of the mandates of 10-17 uh, to give us help in funding. Well, we don't want to cut those mandates. We, we don't want large class sizes. We want smaller class sizes. We don't want to not staff our libraries with librarians. We want librarians in the classroom. In order to do those things, we have to be funded. And the time is now to bring that funding to us. There's another looming problem that hasn't been mentioned today, and that is a, we are on the verge of a great teacher shortage in Oklahoma. Every position that I have that comes open, uh, I'm lucky to have five to six candidates apply for the position. And all my friends across the state I talk to their superintendents, they see the same things. Used to, for an elementary position, you would have a stack of 100 applicants. Today, you might have 20. Teachers are leaving this state. They're leaving this state as a result of the underfunding that we're talking about. It has been close to 10 years since teachers in this state received a significant raise. Why is that? It's not because I don't want to give them a raise as superintendent. It's because I haven't been afforded the opportunity through state funding. And so I would appreciate the funding level to be at least brought back to what it was in 2009. There is a suggestion out there that we are now being funded at the highest rate we've ever been, and that is simply not true. If you go in and look at the figures, you will see that. We are missing valuable opportunities right now to teach students in our classrooms. Uh, we are working very hard for A to F grades. We are working very hard to meet end of instruction test requirements. We are working very hard to meet Oklahoma core curriculum test requirements and we are staffing our schools to meet those needs. We are leaving out the areas of character and uh, socialization of our students. My principal approached me the other day. He said he had a great idea. I would like to start a class, he said. I said, well, Greg, what kind of class is it? He said a social media uh, class. Teach students how to deal with the aspects of social media and the new technology that's new to this world. And I said, you know what? The things you deal with daily when it comes to uh, Facebook and, and bullying, I think that's a great idea. I just don't know if I can fund that class for you. I promise you that class would be just as valuable as any other class that we could offer in our high schools today. Because our school administrators have been able to keep their schools together and continue to ed educate their children, 
by using baling wire and duct tape and still looking good doing it, they get slapped in the face. They get told, oh, we're putting you at the highest level ever. That is not the truth. Take a dose of truth serum. Tell what there really is. The real number isn't there. And then when you take them for student numbers, it's worse. Our children in public schools need almost $118 million in new monies for education funding to be called flat. Just flat, not increasing it, just keeping it at a level per student that's flat. So when they say, oh, we're giving public education $75 million more than ever before, wrong, not. What they're really saying is we are shorting the children of Oklahoma nearly $43 million. Talk about child abuse, child abuse. You're bullying every kid in the state of Oklahoma. There's $13 million in unfunded mandates and almost $24 million in health insurance costs that schools must pay whether the state sends them the money or not. The numbers we have given you today do not even reflect the population growth in Oklahoma's public schools. Truth? The truth is, the last two years, over one quarter of a billion dollars has been found after the legislature has adjourned. You want to know how the rainy day fund got filled up? That's it. And oh, by the way, if they get that money and they certify that money after we leave, then they don't have to include it in the budget. I find that to be very handy. And they don't have to include education, part of the new monies. You don't get your 34%, it's gone. As a final note, a different subject. The children of Oklahoma's testing in the past three days has been a horrible wreck. The State Department of Education has again failed the children of Oklahoma. And you want to talk about abuse again, psychological abuse? Some of these kids have prepared, gone in the classroom, took part of the test, and now have told, been told that that test isn't valid. Go take it again in the, later in the afternoon. They went back and took it again in the afternoon. Guess what? Crashed again, right? Crashed again. And then they said, go back tomorrow morning. Guess what? It didn't do it again. Now we're testing this morning. McGraw-Hill this year replaced the previous test supplier. Were they the low bidder? They obviously weren't the best bidder. Were they the low bidder? I don't think so.